How's it going guys? Welcome to the final part of our modular level design tutorial. We are going to look at importing our pieces into Unreal and then assemble on the final level. So let's skip over to Unreal. I've just started a brand new project. We're using a first person template and uh, we have all of our little pieces exported as we would have done in the previous video. So here we are, we've got these a uh, couple of dozen pieces and we're going to bring them in. First thing I'm going to do is in my content browser, I'm going to make a new folder and we'll just call it corridors, something like that. Just keep all these pieces and materials together. Let's go in there. Let's go to that little folder where we have all these saved. And let's uh, let's bring in all of these pieces. Just select them all, drag them all in. We have a couple of little things that we need to look for here. Uh, we will turn on the auto generate collision. That'll be handy. And in here, it's always useful to hit this combined meshes. Now, I believe that all my pieces are single meshes anyway. It doesn't really matter, but it's good practice to hit that. Just hit import all. That will bring all those pieces in. Now, because we put a material on this in 3D Studio Max, it has already created a... It's actually made a couple of materials. Let me just see which one we're using here. Uh, we're using that 01 default. Okay. So this uh, 01 default material that it has brought in for us. I'm not sure why this one has come in. Oh, yes, this is what the, the other one we made in the tutorial. Okay. Uh, but you'll bring in a material and you'll see that if done right, uh, it will also bring in that trim sheet. And the pieces that we have are sort of pre- uh, already unwrapped. I'll add that uh, diffuse texture to it already. So we'll just hit save all to save all of these pieces. And what we will also do is open this default material. You'll see that we just have uh, the one texture sample in here. We will bring in our other little texture maps. We've got our normal and our roughness. I'm not going to make a complicated material for this. I'm just going to add those couple of basic maps just to make it look a little bit prettier, the roughness and the normal. Just drag those into that same folder. And with our material open, we will drag those in here and just connect them up to the appropriate slots. So that's my normal. It can go into the normal slot. My roughness goes into the roughness slot. There we are. I'm going to just tidy these up a little bit. I'm not a fan of crossing the wires over here. But there we go. Some little material. We're not going to uh, worry too much about it. We could do some other things. Play with the specular, metallic, etc. There we go. You can see we've got a little bit of sort of shininess and normal on there now. Let's close this. And let's worry now about getting these pieces actually into our uh, level. So what we want to do is take these one at a time and just drag them in. Now Unreal will only put this right on the surface uh, and because we have that flat polygon kind of at the corners you'll see it's kind of disappearing underneath the uh, surface of this uh, pre-existing piece of level geometry just this big cube. So what we want to do is we want to select our piece here and we want to set these up uh, kind of like a, a tile set. And we're going to do that by setting the positions of each piece in turn. Now each piece is 300 by 300. So I'm going to set my first piece to 0, 0. And then I'm going to raise it up in the X direction to 200. Just so we can see all of the piece. I'm going to take my next piece here. Drag it in just anywhere at all. And set it to 0, 300. And then 200 high. And we'll see that these pieces are now stuck together perfectly. There's no wee gap appearing between them. So we want to do that for each piece. Bring it in, increase the number by 300 each time. So this next one should be 600 and then a height of 200. Keep them all consistent and just do that for each piece. This one here, because it's just our flat floor, we can't see it at all. So it's very important we raise it up to 200. And then if you have them going too far across, we can just change it to uh, 300, comma, 0, comma, 200. And the next one, 300, comma, 300, comma, 200. 
always setting that height to 200. So we're just going to do this for all of our pieces. Uh, the pillars work the same way. If we set this to 0, 0, 0, sorry, 200, 200 height, we'll see that it comes into the middle of our piece here. So instead of putting it in the middle, uh, what we'll do is we'll put it at the end, kind of at the corner of these. So each piece is 300 which would mean we're in the middle. So to go to the edge, we have to go 150, 150. And we'll leave that height at 200. And there we are, that's now sitting kind of at the corner of those pieces. Same for the wall here, if we take this interior wall, we'll set this to zero, zero, 200, just to start, see where it is. Uh, okay, let's shift this to uh, one, 150 in the X direction. And we'll just put it up alongside that pillar. There we go. So that's sitting down nicely between these two. And it's bridging that wee gap very nice. And we can see it lines up, <clears throat> excuse me, perfectly with that pillar. So we're just going to do that for all of our pieces. Uh, and now the important thing is, how do we actually position these? We don't want to use these uh, pieces as part of the level. We want to bring in every single piece as a... Uh, just just one instance of them, have them here in a wee cluster all nicely uh, lined up together. I want to make sure that those numbers are perfect. They should always be multiples of 300. If they're always multiples of 300, we know that we're doing it right. And we know we'll get no gaps. Uh, or sorry, in this case, multiples of 150 as well. 150, 300. Uh, so then what we want to do is once we've got all of these pieces in place, we now want to start uh, moving them into an actual level. So let me just uh, delete a few of these wee cubes here that we're getting, just to clear a bit of space. And we'll start just to assemble this together. I want to take this, uh, and one last thing I want to, oops, oh, come on. One last thing I want to do, actually, is set up my grid snaps. So if I just, uh, say, take this end piece and I move it, you can see that we're getting quite consistent movement here, quite small increments. Uh, I don't want that. It will snap. It will snap because it's moving in increments of 10, so it's quite easy to, to snap that, but it's still very small. Instead, I'm going to set this to 50, and that way my multiples of 150 for the pillar and the wall, or my multiples of 300, are much easier to obtain. We can see we've got these large snap values. I am going to say, start with this cross piece. Okay, let's do that. Let's hold the Alt key. And with our move tool selected, we're just going to move this down and it will create a duplicate. And we can see over on the right, we are changing our X value. So let's get that a nice multiple of 300. So 900, 600, 200, that's fine. <clears throat> so we have a nice uh, starting piece here that our other pieces can build upon. And we'll all be having those nice multiple numbers. Let's take our little straight piece here. Get better position. Again, hold the Alt key. And let's move this one down, create a duplicate of it. And because we have that snap set to 50 units, as we move this, it's very easy to snap it right into position. You'll see there, we've got these big snaps. Snaps right into the corner. Very, very nice. Now, we do need to rotate this. That's easy enough done. Let's check our rotate tool. Um, this will be set to multiples of 10, which again will snap nicely to 90 degrees. But let's make that job a little bit easier for ourselves. Let's increase the angle snap this time uh, all the way up to 45. And this way we just do two snaps and that will be at 90. We could actually set that up to 90 uh, immediately if we wanted to. But let's just leave it at 45. That way we can see nicely that rotation. Let's take one of these walls here. Let's hold the Alt key. Make a little duplicate and bring that down. And then we can just snap it into the right position. Let's take one of our pillars, hold Alt, duplicate that, and we'll just move it into position. And again, with that snap value of 50, we can snap these very, very nicely into position. And once we have uh, pieces down, note that I am always leaving one of these pieces up here as a reference. This is kind of like my palette. This is like my, my uh, paint palette. There's always going to be one of each piece up here. And then I can duplicate these and move them down wherever I want. And once they're there, I can hold Alt and again duplicate. 
uh, W for move, E for rotate, with those little snaps. And we have our snap set up nicely. It is very, very quick and easy to, uh, let me see, let me grab this little floor piece here. With our snaps set up, it is very, very easy to start making a large level using this uh, geometry. So that one we go into position to OK. We will make a, another little duplicate of that, another little duplicate here. And what we can do is we can actually select multiple pieces. So I can select these three, hold Alt, and move them back down here. Say take that wall again, snap it into position. So just look how that pillar will actually go right over these two wall pieces. If we took that pillar away, we should still have a solid wall. That's okay. The pillar is really just a decorative element. Uh, we can take this. We can hold Alt, move it down a bit. E key to rotate. Rotate 90 degrees. And just reposition. Perfect. Look at that. Now we do get these little uh, kind of rough corners here. But that's why we made the pillar. Just to hide those little rough corners. We can duplicate this again. And once we have some of these in position, we don't even need to rotate them. We just keep building up. Hold the Alt key. And start assembling that geometry. So I've only included a couple of the pieces here. We do have other pieces, different wall pieces. We've got little archways. Um, let me just bring in this little archway piece because we need to have a little talk about that. So let's set our... Uh, values here. Let's we'll give me you. Uh, let's go zero comma minus one fifty comma two hundred. Did I get those numbers right? No, not quite right. Sorry, that should be minus one fifty zero. There we are. That's that archway position nicely. I just want to play through the game to we see a couple of things that are going on here. Uh, let me. Now make a duplicate of that archway. My little character's in the way there. And just move it down, say in a position here. I'll snap in nicely. And let me just put a little bit of pathway out here. Now if I play this level, we'll notice a couple of things. Uh, we've got nice collision there. We can't run through the walls. And when we uh, come to these parts, you'll see we've got that little step up there because the collider is working nicely. But if we look at our little flat tile here, we're just going to walk right through it. We're not going to walk up on it. And also, if we go to our archway, we can't walk through that archway. And if we shoot, see there's an invisible collider there. Uh, that's because we auto-generated our colliders. Uh, and they're very simple in shape. Uh, they're not quite accurate, so we need to fix a couple of these. So down here in our content browser, let's fix this archway first of all. If we open that up, we can look and see our collisions. The simple collision just gives us a little square box the whole way through which isn't really good enough for us, it blocks out that. So what we're going to do over here in the details panel is scroll all the way down to collision. We're going to set our collision complexity from project default, put it down to this bottom option, use complex collision as simple. So uh, the complex collision actually is following the shape of the mesh itself. It's a little bit more processor intensive because it uses the actual polygons. Because it's a low poly model anyway, not really too worried about it. It won't uh, hit performance too badly. But we just want to set that complex collision on there. The other piece that we want to do now is our default floor piece. Which, uh, if we look at collision, there's no collision on it because it's not thick enough to even have a collider box. It's just a single polygon. So what we are going to do is come up here to collision. Add box, simplified collision. And we'll see a little green frame appears around there. Getting some flicker in here. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, I have lost my... Apologies for the flickering. I'm not sure what's causing that. 
Uh, we want to go now, scroll all the way down to our collision. Uh, we've added a primitive collider, uh, a box collider, and it has these different elements we can affect. Uh, the first thing we'll do is the extents. So it will automatically fit it out to the width and depth of the tile itself, but it has no height. You can see there we have Z extent to zero. So we're just going to set that up to one. Uh, just to show what's happened there, if I set that up to say six, we get a nice wee thick chunky box there, or even 60. There we get a nice chunky box. We don't want it that thick. Thickness of one is fine. And we're just going to hit save. And now when we hit play, we can walk through that archway and we can walk on that surface. And you'll see I fall off and step up. So just be aware of those uh, collider issues you have. Hopefully this video is recording okay. My laptop does tend to freak out a little bit when we go into Unreal and record at the same time. Um, continue on assembling your level, bring in the other pieces and see what you can create. Uh, you're only really limited by your imagination. Now, this is very clean and pristine. What we would want to do after this point is add in some extra props, barrels, crates, that kind of thing. And also maybe add in some decals to the walls, some graffiti, some grime, some stains, things like that. Uh, and I have tutorials on that on my channel if you want to look. Uh, learn how to make some of those props, learn how to do some of those special effects. But that brings us to the end of this little tutorial, how to make these modular level kits. Hope you enjoyed that, hope you learned something. And uh, let me know if you create anything, uh, maybe share it down below in the comments. Thank you very much. I'm going to leave the video here. And I will see you for the next tutorial series.